Securities Investor Protection Corporation. And that'll do it for a look at Wall Street today. As we reported yesterday, increasing numbers of Japanese car makers are setting up shop in this country and turning out cars from American plants. Japan says the idea is to employ Americans and to help the U.S. economy by keeping more of the dollars spent on Japanese cars in this country. But in the concluding part of our special report, Japan in the driver's seat, national correspondent Helen Whelan reports that the benefits of the Japanese invasion are being questioned. These seats that will go into a Honda are made by Belmar, a Japanese-owned company in Ohio. The windshields are made just down the road from this Ohio-based Honda plant by a company that is 80% Japanese-owned. In fact, 182 Japanese auto parts suppliers have already opened production facilities in the U.S. or plan to open them soon. They will be serving Japanese automakers in the U.S. that expect to be making 2 million Japanese cars a year by 1992. Currently, 320,000 Hondas are made here. Soon the plant will start building 150,000 more Hondas. While Americans seem to have a strong desire for Japanese cars, some are questioning whether that's good for the U.S. economy. What you see is displacement of jobs that is occurring, displacement of domestically owned production being replaced by foreign-owned production. They're employing people in the United States. They're paying taxes in the United States. They're building facilities in the United States. The Reagan administration believes the opening and closing of plants, no matter who owns them, is bound to happen in a free market. It believes in the end, consumers will benefit from lower car prices if supply exceeds demand and the competition to sell the cars is keen. But if you find that, the, uh, that they're displacing American-made cars, would then that make you question whether they should be here or put a limit on how many companies should be here? Uh, not any more than it bothers me that American aircraft or American computers may displace those made by other countries when we export. While there is a lot of grumbling about Japanese auto companies and parts suppliers coming to the United States, little is being done in Congress to limit their access. In fact, U.S. auto companies oppose any restrictions since they want to maintain their freedom to build cars and parts in Japan for the American market. In Marysville, Ohio, Helen Whalen for the Nightly Business Report. In business notes, the federal budget deficit was $148 billion in fiscal 1987, $73 billion less than it was in the previous year. Lower spending and higher revenues than expected led to the lower deficit. And the world's largest brewer, Anheuser-Busch, reports third quarter earnings of 65 cents a share compared to 54 cents a share in the same period a year ago. Coming up, Tom Peters looks at how a business can attract and keep a customer for a lifetime. In tonight's commentary, author Tom Peters, founder of the Tom Peters Group, discusses how good service can pay off for a business. What should you be thinking about when a customer purchases something from you? Well, not just the value of today's transaction, but the lifetime potential of that customer. For example, 
My small office does $1,500 a month worth of business with Federal Express. Multiply that by 12 months and then 10 years. When the Federal Express delivery person comes into my office, she should see $180,000 stamped on the forehead of our receptionist, the 10-year value of my business. Now, the real key to business is word-of-mouth recommendation. And based on empirical studies, suppose that a happy customer recommends you to just one person who becomes another happy customer. So take that 180000 multiply it by two, and when the Federal Express person comes into our office, she should see $360,000 written on the forehead of our receptionist. Now, here's the final twist. The average Federal Express delivery person will call on about 40 customers my size each day. Take that 360000 multiply it by the 40, and that Federal Express person is managing a $14,400,000 lifetime portfolio of business each and every day. The point is, it makes you think about that customer differently and think about that first-line person in the company. I'd suggest you try this math yourself. It's very powerful. Lifetime customers is what business is all about. I'm Tom Peters. Recapping tonight's top stories, the dollar resumes its slide as a European official suggests the U.S. has abandoned G7 currency targets, although the U.S. Treasury denies it. Meanwhile, the stock market manages to turn around after an early slide. It ends up in neutral as the Dow Jones Industrial Average closes with a third of a point gain at 1846.82. Looking ahead to tomorrow, we'll find out whether the British government decides to cancel a major offering of stock in British petroleum because of the market's crash. And that's it for this edition of the Nightly Business Report for Wednesday, October 28th. For Linda, for Neil, and for all of us at the Nightly Business Reports, good night. The Nightly Business Report is made possible by Kidder Peabody. Our over 120 years of investment experience is an arch to build upon. Serving the financial needs of individuals, corporations, and governments. Kidder Peabody. Professionalism worldwide. By Digital Equipment Corporation with its new generation of Vax family computers. Connecting headquarters, branch offices, production and research centers into a single integrated computing environment. Digital has it now. And public television stations across the nation. For a transcript of this program, Please send $3 check or money order to NBR Transcripts, P.O. Box 12724, Overland Park, Kansas 66212. Please include the date of the broadcast.